What would happen if Tim Burton directed Castaway? Well, then what would happen if someone decided to turn that movie into a video game? Well, there's only one game that fits that description. So hello everyone, my name is Schmenti, and this is my tribute to Don't Starve. So, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory meets survival. What could go wrong? Well, as it turns out, Don't Starve is brutal. The aim of the game is simple, and it's in the name, Don't Starve. So how does a game with that simple of a goal become one of the most critically acclaimed survival games of all time? Let's take a look. Remember that joke I said in the beginning about Tim Burton? Well, it actually isn't fake. The two big ideas for this game were Minecraft and, well, Tim Burton movies. The force of nature in video games at the time this game came out was Minecraft. People were absolutely obsessed with it. So taking that into inspiration, indie studio Clay Entertainment came up with a crazy idea. What if they were able to take the idea of Minecraft, give it a horror spin, and create a backstory for it? Well, that's exactly what they did. Don't Starve dropped onto the markets on April 23rd, 2013. The game was pretty much immediately recognized, but there was one thing mentioned in pretty much every single review. The game was lonely. Yes, in a world filled with shadow monsters and carnivorous frogs, the game was lonely. In a world such as this, why couldn't we enjoy the horror with our friends? Well, Clay saw this and decided to do something unthinkable. They listened to their fans. I know, right? A game studio being good for once. It was refreshing. A free multiplayer expansion, Don't Starve Together, was announced on May 7th, 2014. People saw this as a massive opportunity to revisit a beautiful game. But how was it received? This game is made for multiplayer. Yes, I had a ton of fun in single player, but there's just something about surviving with people you care about by your side. I only have about 50 hours or so in the single player game, but in Don't Starve Together, I've got well over 100. This game is something special, something vastly different than most games I've ever played. The game has a simple task for you, don't starve, and yet the hours and hours of not starving is where you have fun. The meat of the game is realistic. You have three things to take into effect, health, hunger, and sanity. The first two are relatively self-explanatory and are core aspects of basically every single survival game, but sanity is where the game is vastly different than the rest. You see, during the evening and the night, or doing unholy things like fighting monsters or digging up graves, your sanity drops. This can make you hallucinate shadow monsters that, if your sanity drops enough, can actually harm you. This adds a completely new thing to deal with in the game, so you can't just focus on stockpiling seeds. This is very realistic, as in real survival, one of the main focuses is making sure you keep your will to live. Nobody would really think about that as a core aspect of a survival game, but if you start losing your mind, how can you take care of yourself? Another part of the game I absolutely adore is the seasons. The game has realistic seasons, starting you in either spring or fall. Those two are the easy seasons. Crops grow, you can find food easily, and you don't have to worry about exposure to the elements. No, the game gets difficult in winter and summer. No, as it turns out, summer is not the time for pool parties and don't starve. No, summer is deadly. You can get hurt by standing in the sun too long and letting your inner temperature warm too much. You must carry around special items to cool yourself down. Winter is the same way, except reversed. Nothing is alive except for some pesky penguins here and there. You have to carry heated stones around and hope to god your food supply lasts through the winter. It's brutally difficult and insanely fun. Another giant part of all this difficulty is the fact that there is permadeath in the world. You can't respawn unless you go out of your way to find certain objects like a meat effigy that will let you respawn. It's very difficult, and also kind of gets rid of that gear fear that a lot of gamers deal with. Don't Starve Together was one of my first five games on Steam. Now, sitting with well over a hundred games, I look back and wonder, how was I so content with my few little games? 
But when I look back at those first five games I had, when I replay them, I completely see why. Don't, Don't Starve is a game to get lost in, a game to pour hours into the pursuit of not starving. It's a beautiful game with a stellar soundtrack and gorgeous art. I remember the first few times I played this game, learning as I went along. What happens when I eat this mushroom? What happens if I try to pet that frog? What are those barking noises that I hear? It's all about learning as you go. No tutorial, no hand-holding. And I think that is the best way video games can help you play. It's a game of trial and error, of good times and bad times, and I think that's beautiful. There's always something new in this land. There's always an item you didn't know the importance of. A new enemy, a new way to play, a new strategy. It's a learning process that I still haven't mastered since 2014. And I won't master for a long, long time. I may suck at this game, but I love it all the same. If you've never played Don't Starve, check it out. It's cheap, it's a ton of fun, and the memories you'll make with your friends or alone are some of the best memories you'll have to look back on. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please make sure to subscribe. This has been Schmenti, and I'll see you in the next one.